Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, and today I'm going to kind of sort of have a tutorial on how to color your animation. Um, OpenTunes is poorly optimized for coloring an animation in the traditional style uh, and doing it all digitally. Now, if you happen to be doing it 100% paperless, uh, paperless, as I said, it's, it's poorly optimized for that. But if you happen to be drawing on a light table and uh, you scan your images in and you can figure out how to do that, um, I don't think you're going to have too many problems uh, coloring your animation in the traditional style. But um, if you're doing it all paperless, I think OpenTunes is optimized to work best. Uh, when you're working with little rigs, little cutout animations. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all the other columns. So um, the reason being is because once once this fist gets in the way, I have no idea um, where anything is, like where what I can and cannot color on that character. So I'm going to go ahead and find those columns and just deactivate all of them and uh, select here again and as you can see I do have some some uh, levels that have been uh, fully colored or mostly colored and uh, basically what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select the fill tool okay and I'm going to go ahead and select like basically in order to make your own like I've kind of already talked about how to make a new style um, you just right click into the palette, new style, and then you create the, the new color. Um, but anyways, like it's it's not like if you can't figure this out, I'd be surprised because it's really simple to, to figure out how to work with the color palette. Um, but anyways, like so here, what we're able to do with the um, with the fill tool here is we're able to select the frame range. Make sure that you have the color that you want selected. And you're able to just click right here and go through a few frames real quick and you know what that's good so now it went back to the original frame that I, I put that little um, crosshair on and we can go ahead and flip through those specific frames that I went through and those are automatically colored so let's go ahead and go here and go uh, to this color right here Put another frame range cursor on it and go through a few of these levels here. And I'm just using the arrow key. Okay, so it gets obstructed. And uh, see, right there. And it, basically this saves you time in that uh, you don't have to color each and every single frame individually. And uh, so here, let me go down to his pants. I know that there are a lot of levels where his pants are completely uncolored. And so I'm going to, okay. So I'm able to go here. Oops. So I'm able to go here, put a frame range color on it. Oops. One second here. Hopefully it doesn't color his pants red. Okay. And then I'm able to go down a whole bunch of frames. I'm actually able to go down a lot of frames and I'm able to just select right there and we can see that his pants have been colored that blackish color it's kind of an off black and so this can save you a lot of time I'm going to undo that because one of the things that makes a, uh, an animation really stand out <clears throat> is these lines not every single line is black in fact is you're not going to want them all to be black. It, it's a difference from what makes a professional animation, what, what makes a, an animation look professional, and what makes it not look professional. If all of your lines are just true blacks and, and such like that, it's not going to look right. And uh, basically, uh, this when, when you're coloring, uh, with uh, with open tunes, like there's a lot of glitches that you run, you're run you going to be running into. Let me turn off frame range and just color these real quick. And uh, so, 
Anyway, so let's let's find the first frame where his face <coughs> is completely black and white. So pull out the selection tool, and I'm able to select his hair. Okay, so there's a couple of lines that I want selected and a line that I didn't want selected. I'm able to select hair line, and then it, it changed the color of those. Now, if I select this line, it goes all the way through here. We don't want that, so I'm going to pull out the cut tool, which is right here. And you can see that I created a keyboard shortcut, uh, which is Alt C. And I'm going to go ahead and cut right here and cut right there. Uh, pull out the fill tool, changes the color of his skin again. And now I can go ahead and select this line and just uh, customize it the way that I want it to be. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of his face here. Just select all of the vectors that relate to his his face specifically. And all right. And then skin line is what I called it. Um, I can see some little issues here going on, so just need to fix those. Let's see if I can fill in this little area right here, and it won't let me. So I'm going to go ahead and. Pull out the control point editor, and uh, the computer program glitched out. So I now, Mr. Dan Insane, he has a number of tutorials on how to color your animation, but it looks like he's working with with uh, raster images, and so some of the techniques don't seem to be working for me. So if I pull, pull out the fill tool and do as he suggests, go to freehand and try to fill in that little area. If you're working with vectors, it seems like that technique only sometimes works. Uh, but it, it, by and large, it's, it's really not going to work when you're working with uh, <laughs> when you're working with uh, vectors but most of the time. So as you can see, I have lines that are sticking out. If you go edit and send to back, it fixes that problem. And uh, I can see this needs to change this needs to change as well I need to send that to back which is control left bracket and uh, here we need to send to back pull out the control point editor and move it now one of the things that is uh, really useful as well is uh, let, let's um, let me go ahead and show you real quick Okay, so I can see that this, this specific frame is barely even colored. Okay, so I can go into window, uh, window, let's see here, it should be color model. And then, okay, so I'm on uh, frame 22, second one, uh, frame 20, uh, 20, whatever. So I can go here and uh, use current frame here on the very first frame, zoom out, zoom in and uh, to, to the specific area that I want and let's go back to this frame and I can notice how it turned the cursor turns into an eyedropper I'm able to quickly just transition from an eyedropper to um, the color that I, I desire and for some reason it's not working the way I want it to so let's uh, oh yeah it's it's okay I need to set it to normal so here I can just go ahead and Okay, for some reason his shirt's not coloring in, and I'll have to figure out why. Is not like nothing is coloring in for some reason. But uh, here, uh, skin color right here. Okay, let's pick a different frame as an example, um, one that that might cooperate a little bit better. Um, I'm able to just quickly select with this little color model and transition back to here, and uh, pick out what colors I want to work with, and. Uh, that can be convenient as well. Uh, I'm not going to go too depth with the colors, uh, how to color your animation, because OpenTunes is pretty unpredictable. It's like, like I said, it's poorly optimized, and so you just need to figure it out. Pretty much, it's a lot of use with the control. Like actually, most of the tools in the in the tool panel wind up being used, and pretty frequently while you're trying to color your animation. Anyways, that pretty much concludes it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was at least a little bit informative. Please like, share, and subscribe, and take, take care of yourself.